In this video, I'll be outlining a VFX workflow that's used on Hollywood blockbuster films that you can use at home. The information that I'm about to share has been learned from personally working at multiple world-class VFX studios, and I've managed to distill it down to a point where I can use it as an individual artist for my YouTube videos. This workflow is centered around three main pieces of software. That's DaVinci Resolve, Blender, and Nuke. I use DaVinci Resolve for the editing and color grading, Blender for the CG, and Nuke for the compositing. In my case, I'm shooting on a Blackmagic Pixis 6K. This camera shoots in 12-bit RAW, which is incredibly useful for post-production workflows. So that's the main camera, and I use that to film the main plate, as you can see here. And I also used a Ricoh Theta Z1 360 camera to take an HDRI here. This will be used in Blender to create the lighting for my shot and add realistic reflections and lighting onto the CG objects. Once the filming is done, I can hop onto the computer and start doing the digital work. The very first tool I use when starting a project is a little program called Post Haste. Someone in the comments recommended this on my previous video about my workflow a few years ago, and I've been using it ever since. Within this tool, you can set up a folder structure. It contains some top level folders for things like thumbnails, exports, VFX shots. I then have numerical shot folders, and then within those, there's more folders for things like geometry, cameras, renders. Having the same folder structure for all of your projects is really important because it allows you to automate things without having to manually choose where all of your exports are going. When I open Resolve, I have a project template that's set up for all of my videos. This mostly consists of having some pre-existing folder structure again, as well as things like template timelines for Instagram, YouTube, and various other platforms. And I also have a timeline called VFX Timeline. This is the one I use for exporting the plates out of Resolve from the cut down bits of footage. So here I have the two shots from my main camera. There's the main plate, which obviously is going to be the VFX shot. And I also shot a plate with this color chart in front of the camera, which is very important for the workflow as I'll explain later. So I drop these two onto the timeline. And at this point, I also rename the timeline. I usually just give it a three letter acronym. I've also named the tracks on the timeline. As you can see, I have an L1 and an L2. This is short for layer one and layer two. With both shots now in the timeline on top of each other, I hop into the color page to do some color management before exporting these plates from Resolve. In the node graph, I switch from clip to timeline view, which means whatever I do will be applied to all of the clips in the timeline. And then I add a new serial node and apply an ACES transform onto it. The input is my camera color space that I shot in, and my output color space I'm going to set to ACES CG. This is a linear color space, and most post-production softwares work best with linear sources. It's currently being viewed in linear without the proper view transforms, which is why it looks odd, but it will look correct shortly in Blender and Nuke. When exporting the plates, I have an export preset saved in Resolve to save me setting it up each time. The first thing the preset does for me is set the file naming. It adds a tag for the timeline name, which in this case is WFL. Then the clip name, which in this case is shot one. And then the track name, which is the L1 and L2. Then for the location, I set it to the publish folder for the first shot. And going back to the importance of folder structure, because my projects are always laid out exactly the same, I can add a tag for the shot number and change it to clip name, which means instead of going into the shot one folder each time, if there's a shot two and a shot three on the timeline, they will go into their individual shot folders as well. Then for the file format, I use open EXR. This is the industry standard format for working on visual effects shots. The codec is RGB half DWAB. The footage straight out the camera is 6K, but that's a bit high resolution to be working on. So my timeline resolution is actually set to 2K rather than 6K. And with all that set up, I hit render and export both of those shots into the project directory. Right, so we're out of resolve and moving into nuke. If I bring in both of the clips that I exported, you can see they now look the correct color space. This is because I also have Nuke set up in Aces, and the LUT I have in the viewport is a Rec. 709 LUT. I'm going to start by camera tracking my footage. Once the track is done, I filter some of the tracks that have high errors, which will improve my solve slightly. And then I select some of the points on the floor, set these as a ground plane, and also set my scene origin to one of the points that's in the middle of the shot. And then I usually like to test the track by putting a checkerboard on the floor and just seeing how well it sticks. Once I'm happy, I then export this geometry to Blender. In Nuke, this is done by plugging the card that I've set as my floor geometry, as well as the camera, into a scene node, and then using a right geo node, which exports a 3D format from Nuke into another software. In this case, I work with Alembix, a .abc file. When exporting to Blender specifically, you have to change the storage format from HDF to Agawa. Next up, I export a lower resolution plate that I use as my background image on my camera in Blender. Even though the footage is only 2K, it plays back better if I make it smaller. And when you have heavy scenes with lots of animation and geometry, small optimizations such as this become especially important. Before rendering, I want to utilize my color chart plate to neutralize the colors in the shot. By letting the software analyze the color chart, I can set my footage to a predefined correct white balance and exposure, and doing what is called neutralizing the shot. This is hugely important when using multiple cameras, as we'll discover shortly, as it allows you to pretty much perfectly match the colors of two different sources. 
In Nuke, I use a tool for this called MM Color Target. Resolve has a similar tool in the color page, and you can even do a DIY version of this by just color sampling one of the gray boxes and grading it to be a neutral color. Once I've analyzed the color chart, I export a color matrix node, which is just a baked version of the color transform from the analysis we've just done. So I can now take this and put it on the main plate that I'm exporting to Blender. Next up, I load in the HDRI, which I shot on a separate camera. It shoots a bracketed exposure, which means it takes lots of photos at different exposures, and combines them all together to create an HDR image, standing for high dynamic range. This means you're not losing any information where the shadows are underexposed, and the same thing for the highlights, so you'll notice that nothing is clipping in the sky, so there's still enough headroom to see all of that detail. Again, you can see I shot this with a colour chart in the shot, so I'm going to do the same analysis process on this, and once it's done, the in-camera colour from my HDRI should match perfectly to the in-camera colour of my main plane. Late, even though they're shot on two completely different cameras in different colour spaces. I then do a quick bit of paint work just to remove the colour chart from the floor so it's not visible in the HDRI, and then I export this colour neutralised version to use in Blender. Now hopping into Blender, it's time to import all the assets and set up my 3D scene. My first port of call is importing the Alembic, so this brings in my floor geometry as well as my camera. Then in my camera settings, I set up the background image to be that low resolution plate that I exported. Next I bring in my HDRI and set it up as my environment lighting. So as you can see here, if I turn off the transparency, it's now surrounding my scene, and I can change the Z rotation to make sure it's oriented correctly. Next I need to refine the exposure of the HDRI. Currently the strength is 1, which is the default value in Blender, but if I add analyze the colour values of one of these grey boxes in Nuke, and then I bring in a 3D version of the colour chart into my Blender scene, with the same lighting and render it, you can see that the colour values don't match. So I need to increase the strength of my world lighting until the CG colour chart looks the same as the real one. Once the values are pretty close, I know that my scene is properly exposed, then I add the exciting part of the scene, which is a CG model. I love putting shiny metallic spaceships into 3D shots, and this video is no exception. Next I'm going to project my full resolution EXR sequence onto the floor geometry so it has the same texture as the real floor. For the vector input on the mapping node, I set it to window, which means without doing any unwrapping, the footage will just be projected straight from the camera's view and be correctly mapped onto the floor. With the basic material working, I then also used that image sequence to generate a bump map for the floor, and I plug this into the normal input for the shader. This will actually create some small distortion on the floor and differences in height, which will help add some realism to my shadow catcher. Speaking of which, once that's working, I set the floor geometry to be a shadow catcher, and as you can see, it now disappears and we just see the shadow from the CG object. Once I'm ready to start rendering, I hop into the compositor, and here I have my custom made render setup. Essentially it's two render passes, I export a beauty which also contains the shadow information and sometimes things like light groups and the diffuse and specular passes as well. In this case it's a fairly simple shot so I'm only going to use the RGBA export and the shadow catcher. And then the second file output node is the utility pass. Again I have some extra stuff like normal and UVs set up if I want to use them. I unlink any of the exports that I'm not going to use. So here I'm just exporting the depth channel, the position pass and a cryptomat for object and material. I have a little setup in the file output nodes that will look at where my blender scene is saved go back up a folder subdirectory, then go into a renders folder. For render settings I don't do any denoising and I normally render at 500 to 700 samples and just let my 3090 do its magic. Then hopping back into Nuke I can bring in both of the renders from Blender and start doing the compositing. I have a little template saved for compositing CG and it just makes a very basic setup that's unpre-molting my render and then copying the alpha back in and pre-molting it at the end. Then in the middle of this setup I can do all of my colour adjustments and not have to worry about creating any dark edges or messing with my alpha. You'll notice I'm overlaying the render on the unneutralized version of my background plate, not the version that's correctly white balanced and exposed. The reason for this is I actually don't want to change my original in-camera footage. The color chart process is just to make sure that the colors between the cameras matched, and so in Blender, everything looks correct. But then in Nuke, instead of applying that color transform onto my footage, I can apply the inverse of that color transform onto my CG, essentially removing the neutralization and applying the colors of my original footage onto the CG. That's slightly complicated, so don't worry if that doesn't make total sense. The next thing I do is make sure that the black point of the CG matches the real footage. If I increase the exposure in my viewport here, you can see the darkest parts of the CG are significantly darker than anything in the real footage. To remedy this, I can colour sample a small section of the darkest part of my footage within a grade node on my CG, and then tick the reverse box which will apply the black point from the real footage onto my CG. And now as you can see it's lifted the blacks up quite a lot, and they also have more of that blue tint which is present in my footage. At this point I can also shuffle out my shadow catcher and multiply this over the floor and mix it to taste. I might also want to add a small amount of depth of field, 
So I used a depth pass and a bokeh node to add a little bit of defocus falling off onto the back of the 3D model. I usually add some other lens artifact details, for example some slight pings on the highlights of the 3D model. I did this by keying the highlights and pre molting them so they're isolated, and then applying a soft glow and adding this on top of my CG render. This shot doesn't really need it, but just to demonstrate how the cryptomats would work, I can use them to colour pick certain parts of my model, and then use the alpha from the cryptomat to grade those sections up and down, change their colours. I can also utilise some of the other channels, for example I rendered the emission part from Blender, which will allow me to isolate the lights on the ship and apply a soft glow onto those as well. I would also want to match the grain on the 3D model, so I can sample an area that has some grain in the footage, and then using one of Nuke's regrain tools, I can apply this onto my CG render, and then just for fun, added some slightly over the top lens flares onto some of the lights too. Once I'm happy with how the comp's looking, I'll export this from Nuke. Again, it's an EXR sequence going back into Resolve, so I'm working with EXRs the whole way through the process, maintaining as much quality and colour information as I can while bouncing between different bits of software. Back in Resolve, I can then bring this in and apply a colour grade onto the shot. Once in the colour page, I apply this fixed node tree setup that I have. I learned a lot of this from Colorist that I like to watch on YouTube, particularly Darren Mostyn. This template is set up as a power grade that I can apply to all of my shots, so I don't have to make this every time. First of all, we need to apply the correct colour transforms to get this ready to be graded. The first one on the left here is taking the footage from Aces CG and putting it into Aces CCT. And then on the right, we want to take it out of Aces CCT and put it into Rec 709. So the first few nodes for the actual color grade are the balance, contrast, and saturation nodes. Within the balance node, I'm making small adjustments for my white balance and exposure. The contrast node, very unsurprisingly, is used to add a little bit of contrast and the saturation node is also obviously adding some saturation. The next few nodes I have for doing some extra tweaks, I didn't really need to do any to this, but most of the time this would be stuff like using the hue versus hue tools to make slight tweaks to things like the colour of the green leaves on the trees for example. I drew a few power windows to add things like vignettes and highlighting certain parts of the footage. I also used a very soft one to darken down the sky through the railing. And then at the end here, I'm enabling a plugin called Dehancer. This is adding a really nice film print emulation onto the footage, which is applying some nice split toning, which gives you some blues in the shadows and warmth in the highlights. Once the color grade is done, that is the end of the process. There were lots of technical things in there. If it doesn't make sense, that's totally fine. It's taken me years to get my head around all of this stuff. If anything didn't make sense, feel free to leave a comment. I usually reply to them all. If you would like to get the project, Project files from this video, they're available on my Patreon. So specifically for this video, that will be the footage to practice on. You can download the Blender and Nuke files, so you can see exactly how I've got it set up. This will also include things like my Blender startup file, which will have all of my presets for the render paths and everything. Lots of good stuff in there if you're interested. So thanks a lot for watching, consider liking, subscribing if you enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next video.